Good evening. It's Sunday, September the 6th, a day after NRM had its tumultuous poll, NRM primaries. And that's what we'll be discussing today. How did the press cover these elections? What are the angles? What were the hits? What were the misses? But also the upsets that happened in the NRM primaries. We'll try to make sense of that story in the bigger context. And I have with me to discuss that, Alex Atreide. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kanari. And um Really very happy to be here, mm. and good evening to all our viewers all out there. Right. I, I want us to just start with, with a story about the assessing the NRM primaries. What happened during those primaries? And, and let's first watch that story, and then we get back to the discussion. From the provision results so far released, several incumbent MPs and ministers were defeated. Those include Minister for Investment Evelyn Anite, who lost to Dr. Charles Ayume in Koboko Municipality. In Shema Municipality, Dixon Katashumba, a former Uganda Revenue Authority Commissioner, defeated the State Minister for Science and Technology, Dr. Leo Datumwesije. In Ibushenyi, the General Duties Minister, Mary Carol Krut, was also defeated by Anne Katusi Memugisha. Father Francis Lokodo, the incumbent in Dodotha West County, lost his party nomination to Ben Kayoji, who previously worked as Koboko District Community Development Officer. Also more telling, the State Minister for Labor and Gender, Mwesgo Luktana, lost the NLM's nomination for Izrusheni County in Intukamu District. According to political analyst and researcher Yusuf Selunkuma, these defeats means a lot to the party. But in truth, I'm seven actually lost. It's because if you're most vocal, uh, most surrogate minister, when you look at Lydia Wanyoto, she's always talking, you look at Carol Cruz, she's always talking, Barrio Musi is always talking, Evelyn Yanta is always talking, those who speak your language, those who support your campaigns, all of them lost. And the others who didn't lose this because they remain unopposed. You see? <laughs> so all the others who actually speak from seven, if they were to stand in an election or pause with opposers, they would have lost. Serum Kuman Kampa legislator Muhammad in Serikat Butte, the defeats to the amendment of the age limit in 2017. And that's why they have lost. The people sent you to parliament, and the critical time was during 20 quarter. Amendment of Article 102B, September 2017. Massive, massive decisions that were taken. And now they have come back to haunt them. Looked at the, the apologizing poster that uh, Smeo Nsuvuga put out, he was basically apologizing for, among other things, moving the amendment of the constitution in the Toji Kwatako campaign. So that was one, one of the things that he apologized for. However, party spokesperson Rogers Molindwa disagrees. Of course, this is, uh, this is the democracy in the party because the NRM is known for four things. Uh, the patriotism, the pan-Africanism, the socio-economic transformation and the democracy. So where democracy is, that's good. But uh, our main interest is we must win in these constituencies. That's the, what we want in the general election. They want that if nothing is done, the frustration among the losers in the primaries may affect the party in the coming elections. You might change your fortune right now. Do not give up that you are rigid in these primaries, that you cannot stand. Please stand as independent that where you have an independent standing against the official candidate of the party, then you are giving an edge to, to the one in the opposition. So this is what we want to avoid. And uh, between now and the nomination time by Justice Biabakama, we have to make sure as a party that we go out in the field to reconcile our people. In the same way, the NRM historicals like the Speaker of Parliament, Rebecca Karaga, and the First Prime Minister, Moses Ali, managed to win, and Yusuf said in Kumat Buttes, these to their historical achievements. My electorates have go with me, and they say I should do. And I ask them to let me go back to follow up, to finish what I have not finished. All right, so Moses Ali is winning for, elector, for historical reasons, right? He came, he came to the NRM as a historical. He was a, he was a power in himself. So he will continue winning as long as he wants to keep that constituency. Rebecca Kadaga does something. She's the Speaker of Parliament. And for so many reasons, she's been at loggerheads with a, a supposedly Museveni camp. Right? So she's not like proper, proper in her realm. Right? You saw even the sec, sec elections. She almost, she had, a, he had a challenge, she had a challenger building on her not appearing to be proper, proper in her realm. All right? So you, know, so you expect that to win. And if you take the example further, uh, Theodore Sechkubo, all those who spoke the anti m 70 language, the one with landslides. According to Yusuf Serun Kuma, more NRM candidates who lost in the primaries are likely to come back to contest in the coming elections as independents. 
That's the story that's assessing the NRM primaries. My name is Raymond Mujini and this is the fourth estate. But let's now start there. The, Alex, you've just watched a story where the analysts seem to suggest the edge limit was such a huge factor in this election. The media, d prior to the elections, didn't in any way put this election as contextualizing it with the edge limit. Is it fair to suggest that this election was won or lost on who voted o against or for the edge limit? Amendment. Well, uh, thank you, Raymond. It was a very big factor, but uh, it was a very big factor, but it was not the only issue. As you see, um, the characteristic of the that uh, things that characterize the NRM primaries across the country mm. was first of all was violence, uh, money, use of money, uh, sometimes bribing voters and hand methods, and of course, uh, it is not uh, by coincidence that. All those who were, uh, who did uh, uh, actively participate in amending the constitution to remove the age limit, mm -hmm. have lost. I, my estimation is that maybe sixty percent of all those who participated have lost of the incumbents. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it, uh, the prime mover of that motion, the Honorable Minister for Local Government, Rafa Majes, who is was in Igara West constituency. So the signs earlier and stepped out. And, stepped out. Mm. and it's not by coincidence that the guy then who has won that ticket is an NRM, but an NRM who voted against the, mm. the, the amendment of the constitution. So while it is not the overwhelming factor, I must agree that it was one of the big factors mm. in deciding who won the ticket for mm. the NRM in the primaries. Mm. Alex, you've been an editor before. A day before this election uh, yes. happens, what are the editors thinking? What's on their plates? What, what kind of deployments are they thinking about? Now, uh, of course, as you see uh, across the media and the reporting on Friday, uh, mm. the editors think about uh, the, the big ticket issues. Mm. The big ticket issues include conflict, uh, mm. personalities, and uh, party structures. Uh, uh, in terms of conflict, I think you saw most of the senior journalists. Yourself, you are in Shema. Mm. I mm. saw you reporting yes. from Shema and Pshenyi. Mm. I, I mean, it was not by mistake, because it was a big, uh, big, big conflict there with mm. uh, ministers and incumbents facing uh, very tough elections. I saw most of the media deploy in West Nile, uh, I saw most of the media uh, deploy very, very senior people in, uh, in, the, east, in the eastern districts of Mbale. Mm. So the, the editors are always trying to look at those areas that have issues, that have issues. Areas mm. like uh, Zimbabwe, where mm. the election was then later postponed. Areas like Chiruhura, uh, the race for uh, Nyabushoz, Nyabushoz County, County yes. uh, the guys who are supposed mm. to be M7's MPs, mm. really Fredda are Kajun fighting. Yes. Uh, Kazo Woman MP, uh, some of those elections have not been uh, even declared mm. up to date. And as you see, uh, the, the NRM Electoral Commission Chairperson Tango Odoi right now is in uh, Western Uganda mm. because most of the districts there, among the 12 of uh, hotspot districts. I think 80% was in Western Uganda. I'm not forgetting mm. Isinjiro. Isinjiro, mm. I saw uh, I saw a, a report on uh, TV last night. Mm. There are serious, serious issues there. Mm. Including Bundibujo where the, the minister is being defeated but the, the mm. results have, have not yet come out. They have not declared them and you know that that's the problem. Yeah, mm. that's the problem. Mm. So those are the hotspots. So editors think in terms of the national uh, in terms of the national uh, coverage of the election mm -hmm. and where the problems could be and where the public interest could be uh, 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 greater hampered. Mm. Alex, I if we are to look at, at, at these big elections, particularly the ones from the West where much of the contest happened in Shema, uh, where you go to Ntungamo, whether it's in Chinchizi, where Chris Barrio Munsi is, come back to Mbarara City, there seems to be an inside story that the press does, doesn't seem to be getting to. What's that inside story? What's it about the elections in, in Yamushozi, for example, in Kazo, in Siruhura, in Sembabule? What's it about those elections that their weight is so much and the decision power has been shifted almost from the voters now to the Electoral Commission of the NRM? Now, um, thank you again. Uh, 
when you look, when you analyze the data from the previous uh, four elections, uh, let's say the previous three under the party dispensation, you will realize that in the areas where the candidates have uh, made it a do or die, mm. uh, with exception of Mbar, of course, uh, once the person gets the party ticket, then it's like an affait accompli for the general election. Mm. So the primary then becomes a matter of life and death. And mm. uh, I'm not surprised you mentioned Chiruhura, you mentioned Sembabude, mm. you mentioned uh, Shema uh, and Ushenyi, uh, Tungamo. Now, uh, if the opposing candidates, and this we need to look at this in, in terms of the, of, 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 of we contextualize it with the, national election, the general election. Now, if the NRM candidates are being beaten, uh, the opposing NRM candidates are being, of course, opposing each other, mm. are being beaten in this election, then what do you think would happen to the opposition candidates in those areas? So uh, the issue is that the candidates know that once you have the party ticket, mm. you are already like, already like an MP, a presumptive MP. So that is why the candidates fight like that. Mm. Then secondly, uh, the backers of the different candidates in those areas are so powerful. Oh yes. So they are able to to have resources in terms of money. They are able to have uh, state uh, coercive in instruments in terms of deploying, I mean in terms of, uh, uh, of having military backing, in terms of having police on your side. Mm. So, I mean, th these groups <laughs> are able to access the, 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 the state machinery. State and machinery. Use it so, mm. they really use it against themselves. So, mm. that's also one of the, of, of, of one of the, uh, of the, of the elements that make those mm. uh, areas so explosive. You have seen the, the incident in Ntungamo. Yes. Uh, where Kutana is caught up. I mean, mm. the other guys are also very powerful. So it, mm. it was not, he was never going to get away with it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Alex, the other thing I want to talk about is on, on the morning of the voting, I, I was in Shema myself. And I woke up to this letter from, from the president saying, even those who are not on the voters register, as long as the village committee can say they are NRM people, then they'll be allowed to vote. And I remember immediately I, I saw the letter. I, I switched off uh, my laptop and I went to my phone. And I found almost 13 candidates. And they all wanted to find out one thing. Is this letter authentic? Mm. And it looked like it had become such a matter of, of great importance. I have candidates who are saying, I have campaigned in 10,000 people who are on the register. Now you're going to introduce people who are not on the register. Mm. How important was this letter from Museveni allowing people who are not on the register to vote? How important was it in shifting the time in the election? Well, uh, number one, the president knows the internal weaknesses of his party and uh, the, part the party register, I think, was not very ready. Mm. And uh, as opposing interest uh, near the elections, I think he had, I had inside information that some candidates had tried to manipulate the party register to the disadvantage of their opponents. So while his blanket uh, uh, amnesty for blanket uh, instruction for nobody in the register can vote was with those good intentions so that some of his, some of the NRM should not be. I saw a party circulating on social media and one of the guys was saying, I was a number, I, and, and it was from Shema, mm. they say I was number 47 on the register, but now I have been cancelled. The guy put it complete with, uh, mm. with uh, a picture of the register and he had his name had been cancelled and they put another name in red. Mm. So I think there had been absolute weaknesses and, and uh, in, in the updating the NRM party register and the president in his wisdom I, I think thought that giving that blanket instruction so that all voters should vote mm. uh, was a good thing to do and he was in good faith, but then it had been taken advantage of by some, what he called, he, he, he released another statement last night mm. saying that uh, he's called them what, fools or something like that, uh, mm. taking advantage of the party and doing all those acts. Uh, so 
people took advantage of that. For example, in Mbarara uh, City South, yes. uh, I told one of the candidates then taking advantage of that amnesty was ferrying voters from Nachivari camp mm, the and they would be voting on all the polling centers. All the polling centers. Polling mm. centers after ferried voters to the extent that on one of the polling uh, one of the polling uh, stations returned uh, a tally of six thousand voters. So mm. I mean it, it created even in Indukam itself, mm. the register ended up having almost 1.7 million voters, which is strange for the population of that area. Absolutely strange. And you see, uh, you will see that you will see that the districts where that then became counterproductive are the districts which border refugee camps. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised if in Hoima also the, you find that the register was, you know, Hoima was also one of the yeah. hotly contested hotspots. So. Mm. The district, so in the end, it became absolutely counterproductive. I think it, the NRM being NRM, they owed us, uh, the, they should have organized their, their house properly before the election, despite of the challenges to do with COVID-19 and mm. everything. They should have had an updated voters register mm. to avoid all these Mm. all these issues. Mm. Uh, Alex, uh, finally, before we, we close this, this part, I, I want us to talk about the, the ministers who were defeated. Yes. Uh, and, and it became such a huge rallying call. Uh, by about 4 p.m., it became clear that many ministers were going to lose their seats. Um, yes. I'm talking about Mary Carol Okrut. Evelyn Anita conceded the election even before the results were tallied at the tally center. Um, Eliodat Mwesije didn't concede the, the defeat, but he was already roundly defeated. Um, Chris Bariomunsi, up to now, we're not sure whether he was defeated or won, but of course it looked like he was being defeated. What is it about the ministers that, you know, the attrition rate in every NRM primary is so high? Well, uh, of course, um, uh, some of the incumbents already, the voters are already ha tired of them. Mm. But also, I, I think it's a, a wider reflection on on the boss, I mean, you know, if the voters are recording a minister and you have appointed the minister, I mean, the voters are sending a serious message mm. uh, that they are not happy with some things. So, uh, because, you know, the ministers are the face of government. So, if they are being defeated like that, uh, in some instances, maybe the voters know that to, to take action through the opposition has become increasingly difficult in the country. So mm. by recording a huge number of ministers in the ruling party's primary elections, mm. they, are saying, uh, they are sending a clear message that uh, the ground is not mm. as business as usual. Mm. So some of the incumbents, and this may include John Biaba Gambi, have suggested that the reason that they were voted out is because the opposition roundly mobilized so that they could vote in the NRM primary and then NRM fields weaker candidates that could be defeated. And this is an allegation that the press hasn't investigated and just let go. But there's images from places like Busia where NUP people are there shouting and chanting NUP and standing in line against the candidate. <laughs> Could this be one of the reasons why ministers are being ticked off one by one? To be honest with you, that would be a very interesting admission. Mm. Then that the opposition is on the ground is very strong. If they are able to go into an NR election, NRM election, mm and influence it that massively, then gi that maybe gives us, the minister is admitting that maybe the opposition arguments of vote rigging and everything in, uh, in 2016 and previous elections mm. we had, uh, had uh, some, 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 some mileage. So, uh, but be that as it may, I, of course it will be in the interest of the opposition to to interest themselves in what is happening in NRM primaries. Mm. But I don't think, I think that's a lame excuse from the minister. I think the voters uh, taking into account of how satisfied they are in terms of government application and service delivery mm. have decided to send a message. Mm. Is, uh, is it, is if you are, an ed is this a story that you'd send reporters to verify for? Absolutely. And is it a headline story? It's absolutely. It's, uh, it's, a big, uh, it's, a big, uh, it's a big story, especially mm. to see in those areas like in Tungamo. Mm. If you see the guy who was shot in, uh, 
in, oh, yes. uh, in, in, in that incident in mm. uh, in Tunga Modan mm. I think in 2016 he ran on the FDC, FDC ticket. ticket yeah, yeah. he still in is 2021 mm. then he says they came together and said the problem of this county is mm. Rukutan. So all of us have decided. Mm. So it would be interesting to investigate such uh, such uh, occurrences. Is it that the opposition has now decided to work from within side the structures mm. of everything, including the NRM party, or is it uh, 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 is, is the occurrence just uh, isolated? Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, we're going to take a very short break, but when we return we discuss the issue of violence in these elections, particularly the incident in, in Tungamo. Thank you so much for staying with Fourth Estate. My name is Raymond Mujini. In the second part, we want to discuss the incidents that we saw in Rushenyi County, where the former Deputy Attorney General, current Labour Minister Rukut Rukutana, um, had a scuffle with supporters of the opposite camp, but also members of the Forum for Democratic Change. Let's have a look at the story, and then we have the conversation about how the press covered this incident, but also what it means for holding the NRM to account during the primary elections. Rukutana shot his long driver down Rwiburinji at a Ruyonza polling station where they had a, a thing and uh, issues of uh, bribing voters. Dan Rwiburinji, who has been campaigning for Mrs. Naume Kabasharia, who, who defeated uh, Rukutana in the NLM primaries, was at the polling station together with other voters. When Rukutana came in and started distributing money, they cheered him off. And Rukutana picked a gun from one of the bodyguards and shot at the cars that they that were at the polling station and ended up shooting into the people, shooting Daniel Wiburingi in the neck. Dan Wiburingi is currently admitted at doctor's referral clinic in Rubari town, uh, pending, uh, pending transfer or referral to any other hospital for, for further management if the situation wasn't. Uh, the, the people around we wouldn't say that he, his situation is not good. Uh, what? Right now, it's a, it's a somber mood, uh, especially at the Tallying Center in Ntungamo. Uh, everyone is worried about what is coming up. But However, the, the results keep trickling in, and uh, most of the polling stations that had not voted that we are voting today uh, actually, Rukutan has been defeated in most of them, in most of the polling sessions following the incident. You know, the incident happened uh, around 11.30 uh, a.m. Uh, this is the time when voted, voting had uh, begun in, May, in uh, many polling sessions. And, uh, and uh, when it was hard over other polling stations, they turned the guns against Rukutan. Uh, currently, in Iruwari Town Council, uh, it, there is a heavy deployment of uh, SFC and PPG. And uh, uh, in Ntungamo, police and the army are also patrolling the streets, thinking that maybe the, uh, the supporters of Naumek Bashari and the supporters of Dan Bibulinji may actually invade the home of Rukutan or start protests in the streets following the winning of Naume Kamashaira or protesting against the shooting of Henry Village. Uh, it's true that uh, we had the shooting in Tungamo today uh, that in involved uh, the vulnerable Rukutana uh, who, who used his gun to shoot uh, two individuals uh, who are thought to be his rival, political rivals due to some misunderstandings. Uh, and as per now, police uh, in Tungamo as I presented uh, Honorable Rukutana and his three uh, escorts and are being held at CPS in Tungamo on charges of uh, fighting violence, attempted murder and malicious damage. The no one is dead. Uh, the, those who are, who are injured are still nursing injuries in hospital. 
that is, of course, the report that came from Rusheni County, Perez Rumanzi, talking over a citizen journalist video that was recorded, ac according to them, during a scaffold that involved uh, Mwesi Gwarikutana. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Alex, you were editor at the Daily Monitor when you did a story on Mr. Rukutan and Guns, um, a story that Ivan Okuda put together. Yeah, that's and, correct. And, from, and he says from the 1994 CA election, since then he has always had guns in his position. What does it mean to have guns in an election like this one? A highly built event, particularly. No, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, of course, by his admission, Rukutan has always been a man of gun. But remember that during CA and the subsequent election in mm -hmm. around two... 1996 he was on the other side mm. so <laughs> mm. but now he has since crossed to this side yeah. now with the gun I think now he feels more powerful but mm. I think what he did was absolutely out of order I mean he had bodyguards why does he want to grab a gun from a bodyguard and, 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 and even though he knows how to operate guns it mm. actually shows that he doesn't even know how to mm. uh, he doesn't know his etiquette around guns to mm grab a gun and try to shoot at unarmed people. I mean, that was completely out of order, and I think he should apologize. Uh, maybe uh, he needs to resign as mm. a minister. I think that was so high-handed, and it, of course it is the headline of, um, of, the, of, 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 of the primaries of Friday, but don't be mistaken, I think guns were used uh, in so many other places, especially mm. in Western Uganda. I was Uganda. going to mention that because we need to the shine yeah. a spotlight, of, for example, on Isinjiro. Mm. I, I saw a report on TV I, at on, on Saturday, uh, yesterday night, uh, evening, I think three people were killed. Uh, mm. They were protesting uh, vote rigging in the process, and mm. they have been killed. Who killed them? Mm. Who are these people who are killing those people? So mm. I, I think in several other places, in, if Zimbabwe had not been uh, <laughs> called had off. not been called off, I think mm. guns were going to be used, and I think it is a time we need to have a, uh, a genuine conversation and remove military militaristic tendencies out of elections. Mm. If people come and decide that this person has won, let us accept. Mm. Uh, uh, the other incidents of, of violence, of course. I, I was in Shema myself. Mm. The police and the army, on the night before the election, captured some clubs and pangas, and they were, of course, destined to the election without a doubt. Mm. Um, in Busheni, early in the morning, there was a scuffle which involved guns. Um, when you look at the election in Yabshozi, um, and I even have videos and, and footage from there, people were beaten uh, at the polling centers, people were beaten at the tally center, it seems to have been a, a great characteristic of the NRM polls, particularly in Western Uganda, to have mm. this kind of violence. But also, there is another type of violence in Jinja and in Bali, where at the district tally center, the losers simply beat up the registrar, take the forms, and decide to declare themselves winners. What's it about the, the, the primaries and drawing on your experience? Because the primaries were chaotic in the last election, which had the Mbabazi factor in it. And the election before then, which created the first set of massive exit from the NRM of creating independence. What's it about the NRM and violence in, in its election? Well, um, you know, the, the, NR, the violence in NRM started building up in 2006. And mm. uh, I think there has not been a genuine attempt to address that in the party internally. Because when you look at the incidences, if you were to tarry them and they do uh, a qualitative, uh, uh, a qualitative um, comparison, uh, I think they have more than tripled in 2021. When mm. you look at 2006, 2011, 2016, 2021. So I think it is a weakness on part. I think the way the NIM is set up also is a weakness on part of the party leadership to address this uh, squarely and genuinely internally. Mm. But it is unfortunate that then this spills over to the national election. Because what you are seeing now, <laughs> if I was in the opposition, the areas where you are seeing violence, in Sinjiro, in Nyabushozi, mm. in Chiruhura, in Mbari, you remember when um, Nandara Mafabi 
won the 2006 election, election he had yes, to members. he also had somehow respond mm. to the violence that was m uh, was meted on his uh, on, on, on his campaign so i think there's a, a, a need to genuinely address that both at the level of the nrm party and also at national at the national level mm. unfortunately when it happens now in the general elections you, you saw the president writing yesterday that these crooks who are causing violence who are bi bribing voters what he was so hard because it's the party mm. <laughs> it's a reflection on him as the party That's chairman, chairman yes. unfortunately then when it comes to the national elections the president just keeps quiet about mm. it or uh tries to intelligently uh, defend it uh, but it's, he doesn't know it is going to come back to affect his own house mm. he, he's a he's a voter in Nyabushoz. Nyabushoz, yes. i am not sure that he's absolutely proud of what is happening in Nyabushozi, mm. in Ichuruhura, Nyabushozi, and mm. the neighboring Sembabure, and yes. the neighboring Ivanda today. Mm. And many of the people involved in the violence, actually, his ministers. They too. are his so people. It, it, it really reads on him. Some of them are his relatives. So mm. really, some of them are his soldiers. Some of mm. them are retired people who have been in the UPDF, uh, which is an epitome of discipline mm. in our society. But then they go and you find them causing violence in elections. It's absolutely uh, mm. pathetic. And I think there is a need to genuinely address that both at the level of NRM party mm. and at national level. I want us to talk about the role of the press. Mm. Um, in all this violence that we're seeing, what's the role of the press in terms of exposing but also holding to account the people that have committed these acts of violence? What, what role should the press have played and what did they miss in this particular way? Of course, the role of the press is always in public interest. And uh, as press, as we, uh, the, the editors, the journalists, they need to pay to the qualitative issues that affect the elections uh, as they plan the coverage. And, uh, you know, uh, voter information, uh, the, vo the, the, the way the voters are empowered in terms of having information to decide is very important for the, for the what? For the, for the press. Um, then... Um, uh, uh, voter bribery, things like bribery and corruption, the press should always highlight that beforehand. When the press is dealing with coverage of an election like that, uh, they need to look at the pre-election action and point out the issues quite clearly. Um, where the press has not done very well is that some of the, of the things have been known for example, in uh, Bushenyi, where I come from, some of the issues that were on the ground have been known, but now they are coming to the fore post-election. Mm. Now, if those issues had been highlighted, the, the qualitative issues in the election, empowerment of voters, what is an MP supposed to do? Mm. What is the role of an MP? The role of an MP is not supposed to come and then be appointed a minister and then the build the school here. The roles of the MPR should be clearly known to the voters so that when they are voting, they know they, they don't vote for people who bring money and waraji and whatever. Uh, so the press should be able to do qualitative analysis of the issues before elections, whether in a hot spot or in overall uh, the national picture, mm -hmm. and then uh, bring them out uh, so that the voters are empowered. Um, what I see in Uganda is that uh, it's a huge, huge, huge uh, gray area for both the press and the people who manage elections. Mm -hmm. is that we have not empowered ourselves as a population properly. You have, be, you have covered elections in Kenya, I know, mm -hmm. and you know the Kenyan voters. Mm -hmm. They really decide. They really decide. They do not get uh, outside influences of corruption or violence that they have, they have had violence in their elections but you know they have had violence because they are trying to protect their the vote. their mm. vote yeah so um, so that's the issue here so mm. uh, I don't think the voters are empowered enough to understand what they are supposed to do so mm. that's why you see violence even spilling over mm. into those Alex in, in your in, in, in looking at the press and the way they've covered the NRM primary mm. How would you score them? What do you think were the misses? What do you think were the hits? What do you think the press scored very highly? What do you think the press missed? 
uh, well, um, in terms of the in terms of the big ticket issues, uh, mm. information uh, uh, and, and news gathering, big ticket issues, hot spots. No, they have done very well. Uh, both the print, broadcast, mm -hmm. online media, they mm -hmm. have highlighted. The people have an, a picture nationally of mm -hmm. what could have been the problems of what has happened. But in terms of uh, looking at um, the small but critical issues that can undermine the election, I think we could do better. Uh, we have not done very well. For example, we need to do analysis that juxtaposes the NRM structure uh, or NRM primaries in relation to the elec our electoral system. Mm. What influences it? What influences our electoral system? So, I mean, is it money? Is it... Because the way you see it, uh, the way it has played out of the NRM primaries, people with vested interests, it means that people with vested interests can come and influence the whole system and uh, subvert the will of the people. So mm -hmm. we need to do analysis that looks at those issues. Mm -hmm. So what are the issues that need to be picked out? Now, um, another thing I already uh, pointed out is voter empowerment, uh, Journalism is always supposed to be in uh, public interest, public interest mm. to put out information that is clear that then helps voters to make informed choices. So we need to, in terms of uh, functional and important information, we need to do better. Mm. And then um, there are things of the, the proper election. Uh, you know, we are in... COVID-19 and this is mainly a scientific election. I've not seen a story that looks at how the telecoms have uh, dealt uh, with issues of data protection. I have been receiving uh, messages from my, con my, 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 my contestants mm -hmm. in, uh, in Ubushen. I'm not an NRM member, so uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how, who we gave the, the information, mm. <laughs> who gave the, them the authority or the what for those people to send me. Uh, I mean, we need those, those issues. There are mm -hmm. issues that are off the election, the role of the military, uh, what role has the military played in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, they say they're always backing up police. Have, we, have they in a certain way influenced outcomes in certain uh, areas. in certain areas mm. how does this then uh, how does this then uh, play uh, in terms of the general election that coming up uh, how the has the police performed mm. uh, when Kaihura was the IGP uh, the analysis of the police used to be people fo focused mm. so Kaihura is not there. has mm. the police performed very the well election. as the mm. police been able to exercise restraint, neutrality in very many areas. So the off election bit uh, to look at the supportives of the election, I thought the media could, could do better. Mm. And then very finally, my last question is, there was a big story before the nine primaries, COVID-19. Yes. And the big story remained COVID-19. Yes. And this election story came and the press seemed to brush COVID-19 to the side. And all, all reportage I saw, very few people mentioned that SOPs were being uh, flouted very openly. We saw long lines, people holding each other, no masks. We saw celebrations, rallies and the like. Um, the district tally centers went on well before, after curfew time and people were moving well after curfew time. Uh, should the press have ignored the story of COVID-19 to allow NRM enjoy their moment? No, no, no. The press, mm. you know, uh, the COVID-19 again, a, a, a story of public health. It's a very important story. Um, I th and I, I, I must admit it's the big elephant in the room. I mean, mm. everybody has brushed aside the dangers that come with uh, not following the standard operating procedures of COVID and reported 
the is a, I mean the exciting uh, lose, losers winners story of the NRM. I, I think the media should have paid more attention uh, to that, and I think it is to be the big elephant in terms of how then we shall move from the NRM because the other parties are now also going mm. to come up with. Uh, primaries and their own internal processes. I'll be surprised, I'll not be surprised, oh, I'll be surprised to see how the police will be responding to how the, the police that allowed, or the government that allowed people to line up behind NRM candidates. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I'll be it will be interesting to see how they react. then they react to when the other political parties, especially opposition parties, come up with their own mm -hmm. internal processes. Now, uh, um, so it is a story that the media needs to continue paying attention to in a mm -hmm. very big way. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the follow-up story, what do you want to see the media report on Monday, the, or Tuesday, um, or Wednesday? The post-election fallout is, is normally a very interesting story. There are going to be petitions. They're going to be what they call post-mortem. Mm. We need a national post-mortem of really what happened across the country in terms of uh, areas that had specific uh, issues, special violence, and what the authorities are going to do, mm. are going to do with it. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Alex, for speaking to us. We've been speaking to Alex Atuhaye, and this is The Fourth Estate. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be back here next week, same time, same time. Thank you so much for joining us.